Okay, so what we have here is a state uh, chart, and basically in the state chart, we have all the combinations of what's happening in the traffic light controller. So you can make this for yourself as well if you are making a different project with different states. Uh, this chart is very helpful. It will help you once you're coding. And uh, how this chart works is we have the duration of each state in seconds over here at the top, and then we have the states. So as you can see here, uh, what we have is a state walking state so basically that's a pedestrian walking and then once uh, if you have noticed at traffic lights there's a flashing don't walk as well so we'll have walk which is a bright white light and then we have a red stop hand which is basically flashing and then once that flashing stops it's going to go into solid uh, don't walk state and then we'll get into state one two three and then four eight um, one thing to note is these states here only happen if we have a signal so basically in state 1w which means it's the walking state for the uh, eastbound and westbound traffic uh, now uh, sorry pedestrians walking east and west um, that only occurs if we have someone at the set of lights that hits the button and then the signal is taken to uh, the system and the system basically prompts it to go into this state here if we don't have a walk state then basically we're going to start at number one so one two three are basically our regular combinations when uh, north and south traffic are red then we'll have east and west green and then the second state would be then we'll have red red and then we'll have amber and amber and then uh, state number three would be all red and then we'll go into state number four now, we'll go only into state four if we don't have uh, anyone in the left lane um, here on the southbound traffic or we don't have a pedestrian. So that's the only instance we'll go and jump into four, else we'll jump into here or here depending on what we get. So if we have someone here uh, in the left lane, we're, not, we're gonna make sure we don't have a walk at the same time because that could, uh, you know, these people could run over uh, the ones that are walking in the south lane as well so uh, we we want to make sure that that doesn't happen at the same time so in this state we'll only have arrow here then if we do get a walk signal uh, we'll go into this state if we don't get a walk signal then we'll basically jump from 4a into 4 5 6 and then at after 6 we'll see okay do we have a walk signal as well no, we don't have a walk signal, so then we'll jump into one. So from six, we can go directly to one if we don't have a walk signal. Okay, to further demonstrate what's happening here, uh, I have a state diagram drawn for this chart over here. So this was a state chart. Now I've transferred this into a state diagram. This is the state diagram. Now, starting at state one here, we go into state two, state three, and basically everything that's happening is each, in each state is outlined here. Uh, as we get into state 3, if we do have a walk request, we're going to go into state 4W, 4FD, 4D, uh, and then back to 4. If we don't have a walk request, we'll jump right to 4. If we have a left turn request, uh, which is basically someone in the left lane uh, coming from southbound traffic, uh, if we do have that left uh, lane request, then we'll go into state 4A, which is the left turn signal, and then we'll go back to state 4, and then from their state five and six. Now, once we hit say, state six, that's when everything is red. So here I've just written it all here as well. Uh, all lights are red in state six. And then we don't we have uh, don't walk on uh, all set of lights. Now at state six, uh, we either look at a walk request or we jump back to state one. So if we do have a walk request, we're gonna go state one W then we're gonna go state 1FD, then we're gonna go state 1D, back to state one. Now I haven't really written out how long we're staying in each state, but uh, technically there should be arrows here in each state, which are kind of like loops going around that suggest how long we're stay staying in each state. So that's one of the things you need to draw in a state diagram as well, just to make it more clear for yourself. Okay, and in our next uh, part, we are going to jump to the program. Okay, since I'm doing this project as a kind of like a fun to do thing, uh, I won't be posting any uh, comments on uh, the actual program itself. And I will actually uh, attach my program along with this.
this video so you can find that at the bottom and uh, basically all you have to do is just uh, add that to your project and then compile it and then start running it if you do have any questions on the code itself i'll be definitely able to answer any questions you may have you can actually leave some comments at the bottom and uh, okay so once you have uh, quarters open you want to start a new project um i already had a project started so um i'll close this current project and uh, we'll start all over again so uh, over here you just want to basically put in the directory of the, uh, of the project and then we're gonna leave name the project as traffic light you want to hit next delete this one yes okay and then you're gonna basically add all your project files here so we have the traffic light.d file we'll have the clock uh, constraint file and then we'll have our gpio pin assignment file um, and then we can hit open here next choose your device my device is the cyclone 2 epc35 F672C6, which is this guy here. Hit next. Simulation is a model Sinatera. We'll have very log HDL. And finish. Okay, now your project is all ready and set up. We're going to open up our traffic light module here. And uh, that is our .d file. So we also want to set that as a top le level entity file. Now, if you look through here, we have all our variables declared at the bottom and uh, throughout here you have a chunk of code. And like I said, uh, this is just for fun purposes. So if you do have any questions on the code, uh, leave a comment and I will I can go through it with you. Um, once we have all this set up, uh, here is our pin assignment file. So here we have all our pins assigned to specific areas of the DE2 board. What I'm doing is I'm using the seven hexes displays uh, for all our northbound, southbound traffic uh, traffic lights and our don't stop and, uh, uh, sorry, a walk and uh, stops uh, flashers. For this project, what we're using is uh, we're using our P0 for the reset bar and for debug mode we'll be using switch number 9 on the D2 board for the left turn sensor bar it would be P2 and then for our um, actually P3 for our left turn sensor bar and then walk request is key uh, 1 and key 2 uh, and then switch 0 is basically our uh, it's, it's usually during the night if you have ever noticed uh, one side is flashing red and then the other side is flashing amber. It's at times when there's not a lot of traffic and you know, the city feels like it doesn't need to have the signals go working in their normal conditions. So they'll have one side of it, which is basically red to the ones who are more uh, lighter traffic and then uh, amber flashing to you know more heavy traffic uh, lane. So these are all pin assignments for GPIOs. Um, you could use any GPIO for this. I'm using the G JP2 uh, GPIO uh, part. And uh, what I've done also is I'm using a ribbon from uh, my CD player, um, which came from my computer to, um, to set all this up. And I basically drew a diagram of the ribbon here. And this diagram basically uh, has all the labels on it. So basically I used... Uh, the manual for the DE2 board and matched it with the ribbon. And uh, that's what I have here. And since I didn't have a pin on the, this ribbon right here, I had to actually use the paper clip and uh, kind of heated it up a little bit, and made a little hole here. So there's no 17 here, uh, even though there is a pin 17 on the DE2 board itself. And I have to basically drill a hole in here uh, to get that uh, whole clip to fit on the DE2 board. Anyways, uh, so now moving forward, what you want to do next is you want to actually import these assignments. So uh, you want to go over here to assignments and then import assignments and then you choose your file, which is this traffic light with walk GPIO file that I have. And then you press OK 
once that's done that has imported all your assignments now what you also want to make sure you do and don't miss this step because things are going to look really funny on your du2 board if this step is missed now you go to your device here and you also you want to go to your device and pin options and you want to make sure that that is set as input tri-stated with tweak pull-up uh, registers because if that's not there then you're going to have some funny things happening on your du2 uh, now we'll click ok click ok again and then now we're going to compile our project. Okay, now we'll click OK and we're going to go to tools here and programmer and start. So that will program our DE2 board. Now I'm going to jump uh, out of here and uh, show you the rest on our DE2 board. This might look a little messy here, um, that's because uh, I just used a lot of wires on this project but uh, how I've set this up is I have this as our northbound, uh, this is our southbound traffic and then we have our eastbound traffic here and then our westbound traffic on this side here. Now we have uh, a red, uh, amber, green and then here what you can see is these lights that are on, these blue lights are actually our don't walks. So um, as you can see, all our don't walks are activated right now. Um, and also on the DE2 board itself, what we have is we have northbound traffic, southbound traffic, we have the uh, east and west, and we have the don't walks as well. Also, um, for, we have switch zero right here and switch nine. Now those two switches are important because if we wanna go into debugging, as you can see, it's taking uh, quite a bit to you know, change each uh, state. So if you wanna speed things up, uh, that's when we basically pull up switch nine and that will speed things up a little bit. And then we can see the action uh, a bit more faster and uh, not have to wait for so long. Uh, and as you can see, as these turn off, these turn on and it's vice versa now if we do have uh, signals coming in. So now let's do the testing for our signals and we can look here. Um, this light over here is for our uh, left sensor. So if we have someone in the left lane over here coming from our northbound, we have someone in our left lane, uh, that light basically is an indicator for them to go left. So they're allowed to go left. But once they're allowed, if they're allowed to go left, these two have to be red. So well, that's what we're going to test right now. So let's uh, see what happens. So now key zero is our reset. So if we hit key zero, this is basically our reset mode right now. And uh, if we hit key one, let's see what happens. There we go. So key one basically, uh, this is going too fast for us. So let's just slow it down a little bit. Now I'm going to hit key two, which is basically you see what's happening here? This is the walk, basically. So pedestrians are walking right now. Uh, so our walk light is on. And what's gonna happen next is our don't walk is gonna start flashing. So that's our don't walk, now it's flashing. And once that stopped flashing, um, the lights are gonna slowly transition to the red state. And as I said, we can speed things up a little bit if we press, we, if we pull up nine here, so we'll speed things up. There we go. So now it's uh, working as normal. Now let's see what happens when we pull up switch uh, zero. And that's the one I was talking about earlier where one side is gonna be flashing red, the other is gonna be flashing amber, there we go. So now we can just turn it down a little bit just to see it. So now we're here, this side east-west is flashing amber and uh, north and south is flashing uh, red. Now what we're also going to do is we're going to see what happens when we have someone in our left lane. And then we have, we're going to turn that switch back on, back off. And uh, key one is actually our left lane, guys. So that's only going to happen after this transition here now we have green here and red for these guys once this gets back to um red let's let's speed it up a little bit more okay once those lights turn amber that's when i'm going to start hitting the okay 
That's when I'm going to start hitting key one. So now this light should come on. This light right here. You see that coming on right now? That's because it sensed someone in the left lane here. The sensor gave an indicator here. Now these two lights are all still red. So once that sensor turns, once that left turn light turns off, then we're going to have those lights go back to amber and then down to green. Yeah, well, they, they go directly to green, but that's still okay, as long as the left turn signal is off. So there we have it, and uh, the whole action is happening here on our DD2 board and uh, over here uh, on our hex displays as well. And uh, as I mentioned, I was using this uh, cable here. This is uh, our, uh, I got it from the CD player on and my computer, and I have it set up with uh, some pins here and some pins on this side it has double um, double of output so basically I can I can use that ribbon coming from the DA2 board attach some here and attach some on this side now you want to use a ground on this so basically you have your ground and then any other pin that you've assigned to any set of lights